Hi students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. In today's session, we are going to discuss Epic Theatre. Epic Theatre refers to a form of drama developed in Germany in the 1920s. The term Epic Theatre is invented by Erwin Piscator and adopted by the German playwright Bertlaud Brecht. The epic theatre has been established against the restrictive rules of the traditional theatre, particularly of the well-made plays and the realism of Stanislavski. By the word epic, Brecht signified primarily his attempt to emulate on the stage the objectivity of the narration in Homeric epic. He argued that the stage must strike the mind, not heart. And along with the entertainment, it needs to provoke social change. Brecht firmly argued that in realistic theatre, the spectator sympathizes with the characters on stage and gets emotionally attached rather than getting jolted and think of his own life. Thus, this form of theatre aimed to subvert the sympathy of the audience with the actors and the identification of the actor with his role. It is also marked by the rejection of any theatrical illusion of reality. Epic theatre thus tried to awaken the audience's critical faculties rather than passively to accept the social conditions and modes of behaviour the plays present. To enforce the audience to go through a critical mode of view, Brecht adopted a range of theatrical devices and techniques. The most important technique used by Brecht is the alienation effect. This effect, according to Brecht, is used by the dramatist to make familiar aspects of the present social reality seem strange so as to prevent emotional identification of the audience with the characters and actions in the play. That is, it makes the audience feel that an enactment is going on in the theatre and not the reality itself. This effect is created using various techniques like filling the stage with harsh white light, interrupting the action at climax with songs, projection of cues card or helping aids on the screen using minimal props, non-mechanical sounds, use of symbolic costume, action summaries by characters, use of space that is distance between characters in contrast to the emotional impact, repetition of scene, happy scenes performed sadly and vice versa, then stylized use of oils, actors swapping roles in performance, etc. Other Brechtian techniques include episodic structure of the play, visible stage machinery, use of loosely connected scenes, directly addressing the audience, actors playing multiple roles, etc. The episodic structure gives the audience a chance to think and judge. Stage designs in epic theatre are often non-realistic, suggesting more than just a particular location, keeping the audience aware of being in a theatre. Again, most of the characters in the epic plays are not given names but titles related to their jobs such as the soldier, the chaplain, etc. That is to generalize the problems presented by the play and to give a universal touch to the performance. In epic plays, actors describe their moves and gestures outside the written dialogue. They stepping out of character to lecture, summarize or sing songs that relate to clarify the situation they are in or that relate to a theme or issue. Thus, in epic theatre, the audience's degrees of identification with characters and events is controlled. They are constantly reminded that what is presented on the stage is just a play and characters are mere actors. Breck's most famous plays are 
St. John of the Stockyards, Life of Galileo and Mother Courage and Her Children. Brecht influenced directly or indirectly the theatre and the theatre artists of almost every western country. Playwrights like John Arden, Robert Walt, Arthur Adamoff, Edward Bond and many more produced plays within the criteria of epic theatre. That's about epic theatre. Here is the question for you. Please do answer the question. Thank you so much for paying attention.